Hi there and welcome to the Bon Jovi point of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. We're halfway there, it's row 15. Now don't worry if you haven't done the first 14, I've just been sitting here waiting for you. <laughs> no, so today's row is going to be at 20 strokes a minute, but rather than the usual 2k plus 18 or 5 out of 10 effort, the same as walking up a flight of stairs, I want you to do this a little bit faster. So if you work with a 2k training pace, I want you to do this round about 2k plus 15, so 3 seconds faster than what you think your 5 out of 10 effort is. This takes it to kind of a 6 or 7 out of 10 and possibly increasing a little bit towards the end of the row in terms of intensity, okay? So it really is one where you can get to put in a lot of power from your legs and it's lots of fun, trust me, okay? So before we can get into the row, we have to do a 4 minute warm up and we have to set up our machine. We always set up our machine first, it's what we do. So on a concept 2, head straight to the drag factor and set that to where you want it to be. If you don't know anything about drag factor, don't worry you just set it between like four and five because too low isn't the issue too high is the issue because it becomes too heavy a stroke and that's the guide for you folks that are on non-concept twos is set your resistance to a point where you get a nice feel from the stroke but it doesn't feel really heavy and you have to heave against it okay next up if you can set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down and finally adjust the foot stretcher height so that you can get to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically comfortably if you're set too high it can be a little bit too tight if you're set too low you can go scooting past and that causes power leaks and potential injury me but per certainly the power leak thing so a four minute warm up we're going to do this at run about 20 strokes a minute and i want you just to think about a push of your feet as though you're standing up okay and then you're going to work on the timing between your feet and your hands but let's get started and i'll explain exactly what i mean by that here we go then in three two one let's go so if this is the first of my 30 minute workouts you've done, you won't have heard me say this part yet. If of course it's your 15th, you'll be like, oh my god, he's saying it again. <laughs> but the point I want you to think about as we start this first minute is that you work on the timing between the push of your feet and the moment your hands connect to the machine. Okay, so that should be the same time. You push with the feet at the same time, you feel your hands connect to whatever it is that makes your machine go. And if you have a forwards tilt over your hips and straight arms, that power from your leg push should just surge, flood into the machine. And you hold that forwards tilt and straight arms for at least half of your leg drive, okay? To get that power in there. And once you think you're happy with the timing, you can increase the power a little bit. Take it up to that kind of 5 out of 10 intensity. You should feel like you're walking up a constant flight of stairs. So your heart rate will be up. Your breathing rate will be up. And you know you're exercising. But it won't be so tough that you feel like you're going to have to stop, okay? You should be able to kind of hit a point where you're like, I could keep going at this pace for a good half hour. And then once you find that pace, in today's main session, I want you to go two or three seconds faster, okay? Okay, one more stroke. And let's put one foot on the ground and continue to row. Okay, so one leg still strapped in. And then you can think about those shins vertical at the front of the machine. That forwards tilt, leaning over your hips and straight arms. One more stroke, change feet. Because it's much easier to get into the body angles that you need to when rowing when you've only got one leg strapped in. Unfortunately, this isn't how we actually row. <laughs> but for a warm up to get your body into the right angles, this is a great exercise, a great drill to do. Okay, one more here, and we'll put both feet back in, tighten those straps, then legs straight, 
row with your back and arms. So swing over your back, then pull over your ar fill in your arms. So your back takes up the initial tension as it swings, and then you pull your arms in. And then out with your arms, then your back rocks forwards again. So rock, pull, push, rock. Rock, pull, push, rock. One more, and let's roll to the front with arms straight and the forwards tilt and just press out from the front. Don't go too hard, just press. Because I want you to continue to work on the timing between your feet connecting to the foot plates, but also, sorry, and your hands connecting at the same time, I meant to say, <laughs> but also that forwards tilt and arms straight, working on holding that position as you press with your legs, okay? So important. One more. Ooh. And that should be the warm-up done. Now, of course, you can continue to warm up as you wish. Otherwise, we'll get into our main session. And I'm going to do what I've been doing so far, where I'm going to replay the video that I shot a year ago. So you'll see me looking slightly differently, but doing a great row. So I'll see you in half an hour for the cool down and some stretching. Uh, yeah, but so we're not going that intense. So I want you to still keep this in this mid intensity where um, you're pushing, but you're not like, oh my God, I can't continue. Okay. Um, basically, the rule of thumb is, you should be able to sing Bon Jovi line at a time while you're rowing. So, whoa, we're halfway there, and then, uh, 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 whoa, we're living on a prayer. Uh, uh, okay? So if you can do that, intensity's right. But if you're just going, uh, 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 yeah, you're going too hard. <laughs> there you go. So I'm flanning like a little bit to make sure that if you are warming up, that um, you're nice and warm. So uh, if, you wanna, if you are warming up, you want to stop and start with me, then stop now because we're about to go. Or just keep on going and try and get the timing right. So... Like I said, half an hour, 20 strokes a minute, faster than 2K plus 18 pace, probably around about 2K plus 15. I'm going to be aiming for round about bang on two minute splits for this. I'll see how my body feels for whether I want to push it a little bit more. And I'll also see exactly how the talking thing goes for, for that as well. So we'll see. Hey, are you ready then? Let's kick into this in three, two, one. Let's go. Now, the key for the session like this is that it's all about the legs, okay? You're generating more power by pushing harder with the legs. It's not about grabbing and pulling early with the arms. The funny thing about the rowing stroke is that if you're rowing the way I suggest you do it, which means forward lean, arms straight as you push in with your legs, then what happens is you get that kind of hang off the handle as you push into the machine. Okay, so the forward lean, arms straight, lets you hang off the handle as the power surges into the machine. You should almost feel your backside get a little bit lighter on the seat but what happens is that if you were rowing down at 2k plus 18 pace and then increased your leg drive to hit this pace, what you'd feel is just more of a hang off the handle. You'd feel like the, the tension of your arms against the handle would increase. 
So it's not that you are pulling the handle any more than you were at the slower 2K plus 18, but you certainly feel like there's more, you say, tension against the handle. Hopefully that makes sense because what that then means is that that extra tension on the handle when you do finally come in and pull the handle to a finish you are finishing with like stronger force than you would be at 2k plus 18 but that's just not to say that you are pulling harder from the start of the stroke did any of that make sense? I hope it did but the key here for the overdrive of this stroke rate is making sure that you are in the right position at the front of the stroke in the catch in order to safely put that power into the machine so like I say the increase in force across your muscles by only rowing three seconds increase in pace is quite large, quite considerable and you really want to make sure that this increase in tension doesn't result in any pulls or strings So, you want to let that power travel freely through your body, which is why I say about the importance of getting into that forward lean and keeping your arms straight as you explode your legs into the machine I mean there's more that you need to think about like posture and how far forwards you slide on the seat what you're doing with your knees But the most, kind of the biggest technique thing here is making sure you're in that forward lean, straight arms and like a straight line from your shoulders down to your knuckles with your fingers just hooked over the handle you don't want to be choking like really gripping tight on the handle you're wanting to let that tension against the handle just surge and flow in and so any gripping too hard with fingers 
or pulling too early with the arms just fights against that surge but where are we? we are 8 minutes gone I tell you what I chose well not pushing it any more than this if I was doing this on my own I'd probably be about two seconds faster but the toll that it takes to carry on talking to you means that I get the same training effect rowing at 2k plus 15 instead of 13 or at least the same cardio effect anyway it's like I'm holding my breath through half of the stroke so I keep catching myself over leaning at both ends of the stroke as I'm trying to artificially squeeze more power out and the funny thing is that when I concentrate on just a one o'clock forwards and 11 o'clock backwards lean I actually go faster it's really easy to think that chain length will mean more power and faster stroke but if you're a hunt for more chain length causes power leaks then it works against you and the power leak at the front can be because uh, over lean forwards causes your backside to escape from underneath you and then the power leak at the back if you over lean is usually about posture and not quite getting the leg drive timing correct but really the important one to concentrate on is the front of the machine that's why I start the warm ups with that first minute working on the timing of your feet connecting to your hands it's important for that flow of power and ideally as you come forwards you don't want there to be a pause as you go from rolling to the front to driving out again I keep on 
using the phrase, turn it around. So come forwards, turn it around. No pause, turn it around. But what you have to check yourself on is that you don't think turning it around is about bending your back too soon. Because remember, the rowing stroke, you should think more about pushing the machine away with your feet. Like push it through the wall in front of you. Or if you're in a gym, into the treadmill in front of you or the TV. You're really thinking about pushing that machine away. And that does help, trust me, with that connection at the front, holding that forward lean and straight arms. Because you're just thinking about that motion. The moment you start to think more about sending yourself backwards and pulling on the handle, that's when you start to grab early and pull from the front instead of the back. All right. We are about to be at the precise Bon Jovi point. And there we are. <coughs> I would have run the actual song at the beginning of this, but I get the feeling Mr. Bon Jovi would hit me with a copyright strike if I did so. I hope you're still staying strong. Try and, if you can, on a roll like this, set your monitor to show you your average pace as well as your current pace and that way you can keep an eye on whether you are slipping so I'm aiming for an average of two minute pace across this whole row. And even though I've seen a couple of 201s like that, or 159s, when I push just a little bit harder like that, It's all coming out in the wash and I'm still averaging two minutes across the whole thing. Now, the fortunate thing about my 2K plus 15 pace being bang on two minutes is that I can also look at my projected finish to see how I'm doing so half an hour 
at two minute splits I should hit seven and a half thousand meters through this row and so the projected finish at the bottom kind of bounces up and down as my pace does so that's kind of a good motivator to keep me on the pace I want to be rowing at that I want to finish with 7500 other info my heart rate would usually be around about 135 at this stage of a 20 strokes per minute row at 2k plus 18 pace but because the intensity is up I'm up at 150 beats per minute seem to be sitting quite stable there for the time being but we'll see at the end what my average pace was and what my finishing heart rate was uh, again though my heart rate is a little bit higher than normal because I'm talking to you although if I was rowing two seconds faster uh, to offset the fact I wasn't talking my heart would probably be at 152 that's T-O-O -O, not T-W-O right we've hit nine and a half minutes to go which is a good time to just go over technique in case fatigue is starting to set in because of this extra power so quick recap on your body position at the front you want to slide forwards on the seat so that your shins are at and no more than vertical you also want to keep an eye on how wide apart your knees are you don't want them knocked together at the front but also it's preferable not to have them outside your arms if anything if you think of your straight arms and the handle creating a like a, a bowl at the front you want your knees to be inside but towards the outside of that bowl best 
thing to think about is that if you had longer shins your knees would be tucked up inside your armpits but because you have good posture and your foot stretchers are set correctly your knees are well below your armpits chin neutral as you look straight ahead at the monitor that's why you want it at eye height if you can arms straight out in front of you loose shoulders loose arms fingers hooked over the handle I mean if anything think about rotating your hands round a little bit so that the handle is kind of forcing against the middle section of your fingers at least that's what I do so it's not fingertips because then I'd drop the handle but it's also not right in my fist like I'm grabbing it like that oh lost pace there gotta make up for that thumbs underneath the handle <clears throat> if anything just lightly touching your index finger <clears throat> and for bonus points to make sure you engage your lats a slight outwards rotation of your arms and then forward lean tilting over your hips up on your sit bones so you want a nice powerful posture not sitting back for this oh. <laughs> had to fix it the last minute then and then when it's time push the machine away from you push with those arms straight and forward lean and then hold that forward lean and straight arms until your legs are about halfway through the leg drive that's when the power will start to fade from your legs and that's why you wait until then to swing your back over your hips <clears throat> and then as you initiate that swing your legs lose more power and that's when you finally pull with the handle pull it in to sternum height elbows through shoulder blades squeeze together and that creates a rebound of the handle from your chest so that you can think about pulling in 
and then releasing in out at the same in out pace and then that release of the handle the momentum of it is what you use to start that tilt back over the hips into a forward position so that by the time your arms are straight your hands uh, will be over your knees and you will be in that perfect straight arms one o'clock tilt and then all you have to do is bend your knees and you will effortlessly slide into the next stroke has to be said there is a slight downward slope from back to front on a concept two that you may not have on your machine but if you get that momentum right of your arms away and the forward tilt that momentum and your weight shifting to the front of the seat will still take you forwards when you bend those knees one more stroke and we're done oh I put in an extra tiny pull at the end to try and make sure I hit 7500 7501 that's disappointing I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I was always told to wait at least an hour, almost two hours before going swimming. I always thought it was to do with the fact you could drown, but I suddenly realised that, you know what, if you exercise too soon after eating, you just feel sick and awful, so whoa. I had a lovely pancetta pasta this evening, about half an hour before doing that, and oh, I felt a little bit rotten during that, but hey... So, I hope you didn't, I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, less about me, more about you. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it and we can get ourselves into a two-minute cool-down. So if you can get yourself strapped back in, make sure you've had a drink if you want one and you're, you're recomposed, whatever you want to call it, we'll get into this cool-down. So right about the same pace you did the warm-up at, okay? And then gradually ease off over the course of two minutes. Here we go then, in three, two, one, let's go. Oh, yeah, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes I can eat and then I can actually do quite a tough workout but I don't know whether it's because I'm so used to working out fasted like usually I uh, record these at like lunchtime before I have my lunch sorry my shoe's making that noise again apologies um, yeah so I work out before I have my lunch but just due to work schedule it's now evening by the night before so I had my lovely pancetta dinner very tasty yum yum but uh, could have done without tasting it again during that row <laughs> anyway so hopefully you found today's row proper beneficial I mean there is that line of thought of you shouldn't push the pace on the low stroke rates but actually I think once every now and then it does have its value because it teaches you about laying in power like overpowering a stroke if you're always training within the parameters of like 2k plus 18 for 20 strokes a minute or 2k plus 15 for 22 
2k plus 12 for 26 or 24 sorry all that stuff you're never really gonna get that proper overpower feel so sometimes it's good because then you know how to speed up by pushing harder with your legs okay one more stroke for me after that strange <laughs> diversion and that's me done with my cool down you don't have to cool down of course you can continue or you can join me for some stretching oh shush i have to change shoes for the next one um if you don't have time to stretch please at least take a moment to stretch your quads and your hamstrings it's important you do that you don't want to seize up and get doms oh. uh, or you can join good old stretchy john he'll take you through stretching if you had a stretching mat or if you don't and you have to do it on the machine i will take you through how to do that with my quacking shoes <laughs> okay so put your feet back in the the straps keep them loose so you can brace your toes up against them and create a bit of an angle legs straight hands in the air and fold your chest downwards Ooh towards your legs sorry I'll do that again I'm sitting too far sitting too far forwards on my seat and so it, I was kind of perched off the edge of the seat and that completely ruined the stretch it wasn't going anywhere near my hamstrings so uh, do sit a little bit back not all the way back because then what happens is that the seat starts to dig into your hamstrings and you don't want that either there's definitely a baby bear position to sit on the seat when you're doing the stretch but if you get that fold right remember you're not grabbing your toes or holding your ankles and pulling yourself down you're letting especially because of the slight downward slope anyway downward angle you're letting kind of gravity of your torso coming forwards being that action that stretches your hamstrings Ooh, right let's move on to quads next one leg up on the rail other foot comes over so that your heels in the crook of your knee bring the up knee across your body so you've got a straight line between your face your knee and your foot hold it in place with the other arm and that should give you an okay stretch anyway but as you twist your torso around and maybe hold on to the back of the machine for stability then you should really feel it right in your glutes right in your backside especially if you keep the tension the stretch going across your body with this leg that's up you should really feel this kind of it's almost like a hand size stretch all up from your glutes all the way up the side and that's really important glute stretching is exceptionally important i should add that into my thing of if you have time stretch this or if you're not going to stretch at least do your hamstrings and whatever change legs there's just so many muscles that you just don't realize get attacked <laughs> Like the, I've shifted, I'm now working back in a, an ed, edit suite during the day rather than from home. And I stand up when I work from home. Whereas in the edit suite, I don't get that option. So I'm now sitting down. I can really feel my hamstrings are getting effect, affected by the fact that I'm sitting down and my hamstrings are constantly in that kind of activated position. So it's not just exercise that can do you in. <laughs> Just life in general, can life in general. Right, let's do quads. So hold on to the monitor for stability if you wish. Flick a foot up behind you uh, and then hold your heel up against your backside. So I'm trying to move. I realized yesterday when I was, sorry, and then put some, a gentle pull on that leg um, to create a stretch into your quads, the big front meaty muscle in the front of your leg. Sorry, I was gonna say, um, I realized yesterday when I was editing together the video that usually when I'm doing quads, stretchy John's over me. So you don't actually get to see what I'm doing. So that's why I'm trying to stand a little bit further into the middle of the machine. So maybe you can see me. Oh, yeah, stretchy John building up his part. Oops, so change legs. Oh, the same, same thing, try not to flap around like a, <laughs> like a very unstable chicken like me. Uh, but yeah, so remember, posture is the key here as well as how much of a kind of pull, how much pressure you're putting into that leg as you're stretching it. Remember, you're not, main, you're not trying to wrench it out of its socket. Um, just pulling enough to give yourself a nice stretch. All right, let's move on to hip flexors. One knee on the ground, toes up behind you. Other foot in front of you would knee above that foot. And then when you're in this position, have a nice posture and then push the hip that has the knee on the ground forwards. Ooh. So you're kind of almost sinking your body down a little bit as you push that hip forwards and that opens up the angle of that back leg and as long as you've got that good posture 
then it really stretches that hip flexor really nicely. You should feel it. If you, if you touch it, you should feel a nice kind of solid stretch happening through there as it's activated and it's, it's going, oh yes, thank you very much. That's, oh, that's just what I asked for, yes. Especially after a row like today when you're getting into the front and really pushing the power into it and getting that hang off the handle. It's really important that you just feel that. It's almost like if you can get that hang off the handle, the stroke almost takes care of itself as you'd push the legs in and then it's only just the, the finish. It's really important and it's so easy to forget about it. Right, let's change legs. Same thing again. Just push Ooh, that hip forwards. <laughs> Start started to sound like, was it Bob Ross? I've talked about him before. It was, it's Bob Ross, the, the American painter with the big fuzzy hair. I just, I've, I've de I know I've spoken about him in a few videos, but I just used to love watching his videos, his um, TV series where he's like, yeah, let's just put a squirrel there. Hi there, Mr. Squirrel. How are we? No, now I sound like the baddie from the Matrix. Hello there, Mr. Squirrel, Mr. Anderson. You are a virus. <laughs> Quite disappointed by the most recent Matrix. I mean, it was still a good film, but I just think it's one of these things that the first film was just so revolutionary, so incredible, that nothing could ever really stand up to it. I and mean, all you're doing is just playing just the same, like this, trying to do slightly to the left tricks of what you've already been doing. All right, let's do uh, shoulders next, and we'll do forearms afterwards. So hand straight, around, out, straight out in front of you. Bring your arm across your body, hold it in place with the other arm, and that tension as you hold it in place should create a nice little stretch through your delts um, and help your shoulders just, open, just kind of stretch off a little bit. Just those tendons and ligaments that, again, if you're doing that hang off the handle thing, that's what gets it. Your muscles shouldn't really be getting it. It's your tendons and ligaments that you're hanging off as you um, push. So they can get just a, a kind of little bit kind of, Oi, what you doing? We're not built for this, you know. I don't quite know why my tendons are leprechauns. Don't know where that came from. <laughs> so, <laughs> offending, <laughs> offending the world, one country at a time. Oh. Swap arms. At one point I'll just not be let in anywhere. But then I don't go anywhere. Where am I going next? I'm just trying to think where my next trip is. Manchester. <laughs> yeah, is my next. So the next time I'm, I'm leaving home to go anywhere. Manchester at the end of January for uh, the High Rocks competition. That'll be my first proper full, full High Rocks competition. It's in Manchester at the end of January. And then two weeks later in Glasgow. And I'm trying to work out if I can go to Malaga at the end of April. But I don't know if I'm going to manage that one. Oh, I didn't do forearms. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. So hands together in front of your face, um, <laughs> push them together, then bring them down in front of your body. So I, I just, you know what? And as you bring them down in front of your body, keep pushing them together. You'll get nice stretches. That's what I was going to say. I was just wistfully away in a world of my own. That's why I forgot about the forearms. You could even see it as I kind of, as everything went silent as I was moving around. You could just see my brain shut off as I was thinking about sunnier climates and thinking about being in Vegas this time. Well, not this time last year, but. Um, yeah, it's been, what, 11 months since, oh, I spoke about it in the last video, but I just loved Vegas. I'm sure it's the kind of place that if you were there for longer than, like, the four days I was there for, it would start to wear thin. But for the four days I was there for, oh, I loved it. It's not many, I mean, uh, let's do um, uh, biceps next. So hands behind you like a, a ski jumper, and then rotate those thumbs outwards, and then you'll get a nice stretch. But yeah, there's not that many places North America wise I've been to that I haven't liked to be honest I mean we're done Boston I absolutely love if I had a chance I'd move there New York obviously love don't know if I'd live there though um it's amazing but I remember my mum describing New York like um <laughs> like electricity or like licking a nine volt battery not that my mum never licked a nine volt battery but like electricity is like exciting and oh oh is it oh it's fun little jolts tiny little bits of it you go oh like licking a nine volt battery it's like oh that's exciting but if you were to actually stick your finger in the plug and stay there for a while you die and that's how she explained New York because that you can go in for little short stays and it's exciting if you stay there for long enough then either you, well basically you, you it, it destroys itself around you because you start to just get you get to see the, all the wrong parts of it. So anyway, sorry. Triceps next. <laughs> sorry. What's he on about today, you're asking yourself? I know. I don't know either. 
So, uh, yeah, sorry. So hand up in the air, put it down your back so it holds your spine and your tricep will be pointing in the air. Use your other hand to help it back. So if it's like that, you just use your hand to kind of help it um, to go to this more straight up. And you can lean to the side slightly if you want to get a stretch into your lats as well. Uh, you know, where else is Boston, New York, Florida, because I did Disney for my honeymoon. Um, we stopped off in Miami, but we don't count that. Is that it? And then Canada is Ottawa, is all I've done. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Don't know why I started talking about American countries. Right? Those are American cities, uh, states even. There we go. So swap arms. <sighs> this is one of the, you know, this is one of those stretching times where I really should just kind of say, just start again, but I'm not going to because, because why, why would I? Because frankly, I'm hoping that you're just joining in with me and all, it's almost like the stuff that I'm saying is just like meh, meh, meh. I'm like the uh, teacher from Peanuts. It's <laughs> probably all it is. That's probably everything that I say. That's what it sounds like. When I asked about that thing about the flywheel, maybe that's why people were like, no, no, keep the flywheel so that they can just hear me going. <laughs> anyway, there we go. I'm all done with stretching and doing my Peanuts noises. Um, I can't do many impressions, but that's one of them that I can, that I can do. So I hope, uh, I mean, as much as the stretching got a little bit stupid towards the end from stuff I was talking about, I hope you at least enjoyed the main row. That's the most important part. And that's the end of Bon Jovi Day because we are now half, we're past halfway there. Um, and so we've just got uh, the rest of them to go. So um, yeah, well done. It's halfway through the 30 days of 30 minute rows. If you've been doing all of them, if this is just your first one, then welcome along. And yeah, they are always this little bit random towards the end. It just depends what kind of mood I'm in at the time. But this is why everything's free. This is the this is the price you pay. You have to put up with my rubbish. That's why it's free. Ha 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 ha. It's like Stockholm Syndrome. Once I get you here, or, or like Hotel California. Once you're here, you can never leave. If only that was true. Eh? Anyway, so uh, I will see you in, well, either any of my videos, to be honest, or in row 16 of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. I hope you're enjoying these. I know I am. I mean, I enjoyed them last time round. I enjoyed, enjoyed them this time round. Um, so yeah, until then, or one of my other videos, please look after yourselves. Take care, be well. Bye-bye.